So to prove the identity is always even, we need to understand something about the composition of two transpositions. So when two transpositions are being composed together, there are three options. Either they completely and utterly overlap, which is what we have here, where the two transpositions are the same thing. So here we have one, two composed with itself, i.e. completely overlaps. And of course, they will compose to give the identity, they obliterate each other. The next option is that they half overlap. So here we have the transposition of one and two, followed by the transposition of two and three. So half of them overlap in this case. And of course, this is overall going to give a free cycle. So one is overall going to go to three, two goes to one, three goes to two. So that can be written like this in our notation. Now, there's something very important to understand about compositions of transpositions like this, which is that they can be rewritten. There's another composition of two transpositions that gives this same free cycle, and I have written it here. So instead of first moving one to two and then moving two to three, what you could actually do is move one to three second, and your first transposition is going to be two and three. So if you look at this here, this composition of two transpositions, this overall gives the same free cycle as this. So for any composition of two transpositions where they overlap half like this, overlap in this awkward way, there is a, another, there is a second composition of two transpositions that gives rise to that same free cycle. And this is going to be crucial to our proof that the identity is always going to be even. The reason that this is going to be so useful is it means that you can move the, comp the transposition that contains a certain element from one side to the other. So if we look, for instance, at one here, here is the transposition involving one. This transposition doesn't involve one. If we want to do the transposition that contains one second, it is possible to do that. Here is the composition of transpositions where one is second. So you can rewrite this as this. And the crucial thing is that this, the transposition involving one has moved and that's being able to move the transposition involving a certain element from one side to the other is crucial to our proof that the identity is going to be even. You'll see how in just a moment. So that's the second scenario. The third scenario is like so. The two transpositions don't overlap at all. And in this case, they're commutative. So this is one, two composed with three, four, like so. But you could also write it as three, four composed with one, two. If you do this one first and then this one, it will give you overall the exact same element. So if they don't overlap at all, they're completely commutative. So they can either obliterate one another when they overlap completely, or they're complicated because they overlap half. But even in that situation, you can manipulate them in this way, or they're completely commutative um, because they don't overlap at all, in which case they're very simple. So we're going to show how we can use this to do some magic now. So I have written here a composition of transpositions that is quite complicated, but overall gives the identity. So let's just prove that. So we'll follow the line. So one, if we follow one, here we go. And you can see it's coming all the way back to one. If we follow the line for two, again, you can see it's coming back to two. If we follow the line for three, again, there you go, it's coming back to three. And then four obviously is correct. Um, but just to prove that, there you go, four has come back to four. So overall, this composition of transpositions gives the identity. Now, writing this out in notation, so our first transposition is 1 and 3, our second transposition is 3 and 4, our third transposition is 1 and 2, our fourth transposition is 2 and 3, fifth is 1 and 2, and sixth is 1 and 4. So this is this element that is giving the identity. And I want to show you how we can use what we've just learned about uh, the three different types of composition of two transpositions to manipulate this and gradually make it simpler or gradually erode it away. So what we're going to do is begin at this side with the first composition. And the idea is we're going to move one of the elements here that is involved in this transposition. 
and we're going to move it gradually along this um, composition here so that it we, so that we can move it along until the point that we find one that will obliterate it and then this whole horrible composition will become simpler. So we might as well take the element one. So what we are going to try and do is move the compositions involving that element one of the set so that they are further along this way. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if we look at these first two here, 1, 3 composed with 3, 4. Now they are clearly overlapping, they half overlap. Uh, so 1 goes to 3 and then 3 goes to 4. So they overlap to make a free cycle and that free cycle is as follows. So 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4. So overall 1 is going to 4, 4 is evidently going to 3 and then 3 uh, goes to what is left which is 1. So this is the free cycle com uh, that comes from this composition of transpositions. Now we've talked about how we can rewrite that as a different composition of two transpositions and I want to now write it so that the transposition involving one is in this position rather than this position because I want to move all transpositions involving one this way. So this is the alternative here doing three composed with four and then composing one with four. And I can show you this because if you think about what's happening here, three is going to go to four, four is going to go to one. Uh, so three overall goes to one. Where does one go to? It's going to end up going to four. And then four will go to what's left, which is three. So this is the free cycle that we produce by composing these two transpositions together. And you can see that this is exactly the same free cycle as we have up here. It's just slightly rotated round. So we can now rewrite our composition of six transpositions as all of these four, but then composed with this on the end here. Now what we want to do is move it further. So we want to look now at this one composed with this one, one, two composed with one, four. Now again, those two obviously half overlap to make a free cycle. The free cycle that they make is, if you think about it, one goes to four, four then doesn't go to anything in this one. So one is going to overall go to four. 4 goes to 1, 1 is then going to go to 2 in this one, so 4 goes to 2, and then 2 goes to what's left, which is going to be 1. So this is this free cycle. Now again, we want to rewrite this so that 1 is only involved in one of these transpositions, and we want it to be in this position here. So you can do that as follows, like so. So if we look at this, 2 goes to 4, 4 then goes to 1, so this is going to be 2 goes to 1, 1 is only involved over here, so 1 will go to 4 because 1 is being held constant here. So 1 goes to 4 and then 4 goes to what's left, which will be 2. So that's this free cycle that you get from composing these two transpositions together. And you can see that that's the same 1 as here. Again, just rotated around a bit. So we can rewrite this as this. So now what we've got is these three composed with this one, this one, and then this. And you can see that one is not in this one, one is not in this one, one is here. And we can continue doing this. So continuing this on, we then look at the next thing along. So we want to bring this composition involved, this transposition involving one further along. So we're now looking at one, four, followed by two, three. Now, of course, those don't overlap. So those are commutative. So we can just swap them round like so. So we can rewrite this whole thing as what I've written it here as. So 1, 4 is now there. There you've got your 2, 3. You've got these two still in position up here. And then you've got your 2, 4 and your 3, 4 here. Now let's continue on. So we have 1, 4 followed by 1, 2. Clearly again those overlap. If we think about what free cycle they create, uh, we've got 4, going to 1, and then 1 going to 2. So 4 is going to go to 2. Four, uh, 1 goes to 4, and then gets held constant. So 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 2, and then 2 goes to what's left. So this is the free cycle that's created. We again want to get rewrite this so that we've got a transposition involving just 1 here. So we want a transposition that fixes 1 here. And then we want 1 to go to the right thing, so it will have to be 1, 4 in this position. If you then think about what 
um, where the what needs to be here, well, 4 is going to go to 1. We want what to go to 1. We want 2 to go to 1. So that this thing here must be 2 goes to 4 so that it can then be moved to 1 by this. So that's how you can work out this new um, composition of transpositions that you need when you're trying to get this uh, one to just contain the one element. And then finally you've got one four composed with one four, so those obliterate each other and this is the purpose of what we've been trying to do. We've been moving one along so that eventually it will have to meet something that obliterates it. And that reduces this down to a composition of four transpositions here now. Two four, two three, well, three four, two four, two three, two four. Now the important point is it had to meet something that would eventually obliterate it and this is the reason why. Because this composition of transpositions equaled the identity, if, it, if we never met something that obliterated this term, then we'd just be able to continue moving it leftward, the transposition containing one, and eventually we'd get it into the far left position, this final position, and that can't ever happen because we've made sure that all of the elements to the right of it don't contain one. So if you think about what's happening, if, it, if we were capable of getting it into this position, then we'd have a transposition that doesn't move one, a transposition that doesn't move one, a transposition that doesn't move one. So one would be fixed, 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 fixed. And then in this final position, suddenly one would be moved. That isn't possible because then it wouldn't equal the identity because you'd have one fixed for the entire thing and then one being moved, which means it can't possibly be the identity. So that's why you can't continue doing this and getting it into that final position if this thing overall equals the identity. So it had to eventually meet something that would have obliterate it.